I'm a grandmother. And um, as a grandmother, I want to share with mothers and fathers how important it is that we never hit our children, including spanking. My granddaughter, she just started kindergarten, and uh, she loves school. And I mean, she loves everything about school, except for this one thing, reminder sticks. She tells me that if you don't do what the teacher tells you to do, you have to give her a reminder stick. But the trouble is, you only have three. And if you give up all of the three reminder sticks, you have to sit out recess and watch the other children play. And she's really worried, you know, that one day she's going to lose all three sticks. And she says, Jack, he loses all three sticks every day, Grandma. And I'm aware of how stressful this is because she begins to play this game with me, where she's the teacher taking away reminder sticks, and I'm basically Jack. <sighs> I believe that children do well when they can. And the trouble is, with some kids like Jack, it's much harder to do well. So she, you know, she takes me to school and uh, points out all of her friends, and, and she points to the boy over there, and she says, that's Jack, he's annoying. I'm like, is he now? And I work with kids that have behavioral problems, so I'm interested in Jack, and I watch as the, you know, the teacher says, now, boys and girls, get out your crayons, and we're going to make a portrait of your neighbor. And all the children are coloring, and what's Jack doing? Oh, he's humming, <laughs> and he's <laughs> picking the paper off the crayons and breaking the crayons in pieces, and he takes this little uh, nub of a black can and crayon and starts making this big, fat scribble. Now, the rule is you don't have to keep the portrait if you don't like it, if it doesn't if you don't like it. And so, of course, Jack's scribble portrait goes right into the trash can. Then it's activity time, and you have to get an activity out of the cabinet. And so Jack, he's rifling through the cabinet, can't find anything of interest, so he snatches the pieces from the boy next to him and sits on him. And this goes on all day long. I mean, you got to love Jack. <laughs> I had a mother once tell me, you only love these kids because you know what to do with them. Isn't that the truth? but I didn't always know what to do with him. You know, my son, he was one of those little wiggle worm squeaky noisemakers that always had to sit right next to the teacher. You know, those of us that work with young children that struggle know that often they come from homes where their relationship to their parents is stressed. And I wonder, you know, what stresses Jack? I read a study that asked little children what worries them most. And uh, do you know what the most common response? Being spanked. Little children are worried about being hit by their parents. And I'm worried, too, because spanking is a huge neurobiological stressor that can have long-term negative consequences. I learned about this when I was studying the effects of trauma on brain development. Now, there's this um, monumental study that studies early stress. It's called the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. And what they're looking at is the, 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 you, there's this dose-rate relationship that the more early stress you have in childhood, family dysfunction, the greater your risk for uh, all sorts of health problems. So you can have a score of zero to 10. And let's just say that um, your dad, could be, he could be kind of mean and sometimes physical when he was drinking, and, and, that's, and that your mother divorced him because of it. So your A score would be probably a four or more. If you have an A score of four or more, you are two and a half times more likely to have cardiac disease. You are four and a half times more likely to be chronically depressed. You are five times more likely to struggle with alcoholism, 12 times more likely to attempt suicide when you're a teenager, and 13 times more likely to be an IV drug user. One in six middle-class Americans have an A score of four or more. And if your A score is six or more, your life expectancy is 20 years less. My A score is an eight. The findings of this study are that adverse childhood experiences are the leading cause of illness, death, and poor quality of life in the United States. So uh, what is at the root of this family dysfunction? Well, it's family violence. You know, I worry, is Jack worried about being hit? After all, statistically speaking, either you or the person sitting next to you on either side has been physically abused by their parents as children. And I don't mean spanking. Domestic violence against children is over twice the rate of spousal abuse. 
And in this country, several children will die today from physical abuse at the hands of their own parents. And we know that physical child abuse usually begins with physical punishment. Now, you might be wondering, you know, how does uh, early violence lead to all these like, long-term health problems? Well, it's because the impact of early adversity, especially in the first five years of life, is more like a, like a brain injury than a psychological one. So Jack, he's not just making poor choices. His brain can't regulate. Self-regulation is a neurobiological capability to manage arousal, both physical and emotional. And children, they learn to self-regulate by co-regulating with a calm and regulated parent. So, of course, the most serious problem is when the parent themselves are the source of this stress. Now, for Jack, you know, he needs the close interaction of his teacher, which, you know, kindergarten is like uh, crowd control, 25 kids. So, um, instead, what he does to self-regulate is he chews on erasers, and he wiggles, and he makes noises, and he walks around the room. These aren't bad behaviors. These behaviors regulate his brain. It's, it's, if you have uh, self-regulation problems, it's like having a dimmer switch that's turned way up high, and it gets stuck, and you can't... It's really hard to turn it back down. So, how do we help Jack? The hardest thing to do is to stay calm and regulated ourselves, you know, to breathe, to remember to exhale. And it, when Jack's too difficult to walk away. But if you can hang in there, then you mirror him. Like, how awful that you're your artwork is in the trash can. And enjoy him, because mutual enjoyment is regulating to the brain, and it's very nourishing to brain development. So self-regulation, it's like the foundation to further development. If you have problems early on, like if Jack has trouble early on, it can affect the ongoing development of his brain. And so the impact of early stress, sometimes you can't see it until Jack's a teenager. Neuroscience, they call it the time bomb effect. An example of this is a study of over 8,000 adolescents, and they found that the number of times they're hit as children correlates directly to the frequency that they will binge drink in adolescence. It just goes up and up and up. It's like, whoa! You know, Jack, he went uh, from being annoying, he reaches adolescence and he becomes a bully. You know, he starts binge drinking because he can't feel good. He beats up his girlfriend because he can't handle being angry. He uh, attempts suicide because he can't find enough comfort in relationships. Like, what happened? Well, whatever it was, it probably started before kindergarten. So what's one thing we can do to help Jack? We can reject all forms of domestic violence, including spanking. I mean, what is at the root of physical violence against children? Spanking is at the root. It is the belief that we think it's okay to hit them. I mean, spanking is physical violence against children. Now, many of you, most of you, I maybe, maybe would say, have been spanked as children. And you turned out pretty well, or reasonably well, like myself. Yeah. And yet, there's this avalanche of research with over 93% agreement that says that spanking cranks up the dial. It's related to aggression and, and emotional problems and physical problems. So why is this? Well, it's because spanking can dysregulate the regulatory equipment, can damage it. So you might be thinking, well, I spanked my child. Does that mean I damaged him? Well, I've had to ask myself that very question. You know, when my stepson was small, he was jumping off the walls, mostly because he was really distressed about his parents' divorce. And I was 18 years old. I didn't have a clue what to do with him. And so, like many parents, I spanked him. It didn't work. You know, thankfully, I found this counselor who helped me get into my son's world and feel what it was like to be him. And once I was inside of his world, I never hit him again. Did spanking damage him? You know, my son is a very accomplished person. He is an incredible physical athlete. 
He is one of our nation's heroes. He has served several tours in Afghanistan. He is a professional firefighter. He is a loving husband and a loving father, and he's one of my favorite people. And he has trouble with self-regulation. You know, he can get scattered. He can over-respond to threat. Like, what about the time uh, his high school teacher got in his face and was poking him in the chest, and he nearly broke his hand? Even now, my son, he has to physically, you know, exercise regularly, kind of like the equivalent of the adult equivalent of being a wiggle worm and needing to move. And if he doesn't, he gets scattered. And I, I just wish he didn't have to work so hard. But the problem is, spanking is a family tradition. My grandmother's mom, she'd say, "I'm going to give you some peach tea." And that meant that my grandmother had to go out to a peach tree and cut off a stick. And take it to her mom to to beat her with it. You know, my father's generation—they don't believe in hitting kids with sticks. They spank them with a belt or a spoon. And my generation, we're still holding on to this idea that you can just smack them on the bottom with an open hand. It's just watered-down peach tea. You know, it、um, causes me a sickening sadness when I think about. You know that I spanked my son when he was small, and I understand that mothers would feel defensive because, after all, society says it's okay, and I'm doing the best I can. I know. I know. But I think we owe it to our children to reject spanking. We have to stop giving stressed-out parents permission to strike their children. You know, 50 percent of toddlers are hit more than three times a week. Can you just imagine how you'd feel if your spouse was smacking you a couple times a week? You know, spanking is sanctioned violence against children. If we were to end spanking, we would change the brains of an entire generation. How do we help Jack? Oh, we got to slow down. We got to get down on the floor with Jack and. Touch him and and be present and let go of the hold on what we need Jack to do and engage in what he's actually doing. You know, treasure his scribble portraits and、uh, mirror his frustration and pick the paper off the crayons with him and let him feel just how much we really love being with him. And if you see another child being hit. Stand up and say stop. Thank you. <laughs>